Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I've got a story to tell you, and it's about Jesus. And so the story today, I'm going to be talking about Australia Day today, is because of some of the f mixed messages that are coming out over the uh, media. And you need to know God's position about Australia Day. The interesting thing about Australia Day, it could have been back 200 years before when the Spanish came down the Queensland coast. They actually discovered the east coast of Australia before Captain Cook. But what happened, if the Spanish would have got control of Australia, they probably would have slaughtered all the Aborigines because they did that in the Americas. In, in Mexico, they killed nearly all the Aztecs. And so that's just the way that they were. And in South America, they did the same thing. But in Australia, what happened is the people that were, came here were a different type of person because the prisoners, they were the convicts, they were actually slaves. They were used by the government to build all these stone um, buildings and construct roads, all those things, but they were slave labour. And so these, these convicts, they were convicted for stealing bread or something to eat because they were starving in Britain. And so the important thing about it is they were unjustly treated, they were transported. The reason they were transported is because there was no room for them in the prisons in Britain. And so what happened, they were brought out here and they were treated badly. And so the important thing about them is that they, they, they were mixing with the Aborigines. There was camps of Aborigines here in Parramatta down at, right at the Jesse Street Centre. There was a big group of them there. But the convicts would have seen them and they would have been jealous of them because they were free and the convicts were not. So what a terrible thing that was happening to these convicts. They had no hope. But the important thing is that time changed all things because in time, the people that came out from Britain, they become free settlers. And so we didn't have that problem. <clears throat> but come the turn of the century, that uh, 1901, what happened? Australia become a nation. And so I've heard somebody say, well, that should be Australia Day. They were celebrating the fact that uh, those convicts came to Australia in 1788, and that was the 26th of February, uh, January, I'm sorry. And that's um, why we celebrate that. So you can pass all the bad things and receive all the good things. And I just want you to know this. That after the transportation ceased in the 1800s, those convicts that were good convicts, they were ticket of leave people and they would be let out and they could inherit uh, or they could be given land for themselves. And this is what happened. That's how the nation began. Now I want to tell you that we celebrate uh, about this. But the important thing about the Aborigines, the church here, they reached out to the Aborigines, the government reached out to them, but Captain Arthur Phillips said they were indolent, in other words, they were lazy and not willing to do anything. So Reverend Samuel Marsden, what he did, he gave up trying to get them saved and he went and he concentrated on the Pacific Island natives, and which he did and the gospel went right through to Hawaii. Uh, all those islands in the Pacific were reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's the history of it. I've written a book about this, and I want you to know this, that I, I love Aborigines, and I've been accepted by Aborigines. In fact, one of my forebears was the first white man to marry an Aboriginal woman in Blacktown. You can find it in the, the records, but also, uh, my family were the first, they formed the first police force in Australia and they were here stationed in Parramatta but they spread right throughout New South Wales and so many of them were up in the northwest of New South Wales 
and if you went to, uh, up there, you'll find that uh, there's plenty of references uh, to the locks up there, L-O-C-K-E. In fact, I saw on the sign over here that uh, an Aboriginal woman, uh, her son was killed in the First World War. It was on the sign here during uh, Anzac Day celebrations. So I just want to tell you that we, the important thing that the Aborigines need to accept is because there's people there, there are opportunists in amongst them, bad people, there's bad people in every walk of life, but they're opportunists trying to get something they don't deserve. And I tell you this, that it's really important to know from history about unity and separation. And what happened, this is the very thing that happened with the people on earth at the time when they had the Tower of Babel, because you had them building a tower because they were going to reach the heavens for themselves without using God. And so God didn't like that. But what he did, the curse that came on them, he gave them all different languages. They couldn't understand one another. And he spread them all around the earth. So separation is from Satan. It's not from God. So what it is, is we need to be not multicultural in Australia. We need to be unified as one. You can be all different people, all different cultures, everything, but you really have to focus on being one nation. And that one nation is Australia. So don't blow your inheritance. If you're here and you've been made a citizen, treasure it. And so that's what you should do. And so the important thing is that we need one another because God loves us all. He wants us to be a, a family. And so how can you be a family if you're fighting one another, wrestling to try and get something that you don't deserve? I'll tell you what happened. There was a referendum many years ago about Aborigines and wholeheartedly all of Australia come to the fore, told the government that they wanted them to do something about the Aborigines and do good things for them. And now what that is, this is goodwill, we talk about it. Don't blow your goodwill by doing nasty things like what just happened in Melbourne. This is not an invasion, we didn't invade. We were prisoners, we were brought here against our will. And so that's what happened then. And so wake up, don't be stupid. Now what you need to do, you need to, um, you need to understand that being in Jesus is the important thing. Are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? I'm asking you the question. Well, if you're not, you ought to be, because it's so important. Now, the Gospel of Jesus Christ is very, uh, a very simple message, because sin really is separation from God. It's doing something that God told you not to do, and so if you're separated from God, you need to have that sin dealt with so that you can draw near to God. And so, how do you deal with sin? You can ask uh, people from all these other religions, they don't know how, but we know because we're Christians. Because the purpose of Jesus, he came, he was God in the flesh, he came to be the Lamb of God, to, and it was to be slaughtered and his blood shed to remove the sin. But we, ha we cannot remove the sin unless we have faith. We just have to believe that. So that's wonderful thing that God has done because the Bible says that he loves us all. We were created in his image. And so that he would have it that none perish and all come to repentance. And so what we have is people that are running away from God and or worshiping another God. And there's only one God. And he's the God of all. And so the important thing about that is that you can be part of the family of God and simply by making a confession of faith. We have a little prayer that we pray, and so if you, it only takes about eight seconds for you to be, be able to call yourself Christian. And this is what the, how the prayer goes. Uh, we ask you to repeat after us or read off the page, and it's, I repent of my sin. So what happens when you repent? What God is faithful to forgive you, and he delivers you from all unrighteousness. So he makes you clean. And then you say, Jesus died for me. 
He was crucified. He arose from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart. And, and so that what happens there supernaturally, Jesus comes to live in your heart. The, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. And Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one. They're God. There's only one God. But the three uh, persons of God are Jesus, God the Father, God the Son, that's Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And so you can't separate them. They're all one. But the important thing about it is God's love, the power that he exerts on earth. He created everything. So he can't, surely he can do something in our lives. All you have to do is ask because he's... Uh, He's the creator. He did everything and it's already been done. When Jesus went on the cross, the work has been done. The work of the devil has been broken and you can become part of the family of God. It's good to be an Australian, but even better to be a Christian Australian. Thank you very much.